Hello everyone. Uh, I think everyone's ready now. Yeah, we're just going to go straight into the game. Why not? Let's do this. Sorry guys, they start... Because all, the, um, all the casters now are sort of synced up in terms of everyone's watching. Uh, they win no longer in control of when the match starts, unfortunately. But we're in the game. Wasn't too long of a break, guys. So this is the semi-final between Blackout and Vortex. Uh, Blackout with his fairly anti-paladin lineup, and Vortex with um, Warrior, Paladin, Priest, uh, sorry, Druid, and Tempo Mage. And I haven't got the bands through yet, so I'm not sure which one he uh, won't. The bang. Blackout's uh, Warrior was banned, and. Uh, What's the words I'm looking for? Let's have a look. Blackout's Warrior was banned and Vortex's Druid is banned. Okay, so Blackout is going to get a shot at that Paladin, obviously. Uh, we didn't see Vortex's Warrior yesterday because um, he was banned out yesterday when we cast him. So we're in the dark about that. He's probably Patron, though. Yeah, I'd imagine um, so. We've not seen a Control Warrior yet and Patron is still very good. So no doubts there. But this one is the, uh, the Freeze Mage versus what looks like... Uh, oh, hang on. Vortex played Reno, right? Or was yeah. it the Malagos? It was Reno, wasn't it? Oh, no, it's Dragons. Okay, cool. I'm confused as well there. Yeah, so, we, it, this awesome. is what happens when you cast different players using very similar decks. No, Vortex, that's it. We didn't see his Warlock. It was banned. I'm good now. Right, ah. so we didn't actually get to see what sort of thing it was. But we can see that it's got a um, standard um, Reno-looking deck or Dragons-looking deck, so... Yeah, it looks like it's probably uh, almost certainly going to be a Malagos variant. Yeah. Um, the Mortal Kombat going down on the loot harder. I mean, it's pretty pretty like easy early game stuff. Blackout's actually lacking some card draw. He probably wants to see that uh, uh, intellect now. Um, yeah, he's got really good drawing secrets. Yeah, yeah. Again, he's got Ice Barrier. He's hovering over it probably just to just to let us know that he's drawn Ice Barrier yet again. Um, and the Frost Nova again, not going to do too much. Easy. I suppose this is an easy turn to just drop the Ice Barrier, though. You're under zero pressure, so you may as well spend the mana and get that going. But the Warlock has uh, managed to tap quite a lot. And then we're going to see yet another tap into the Dark Peddler. Yeah, he's already got that double heal bot as well. Coils just go to, right? Is there any reason to take any other card when you're against Freeze Mage? No, you're not going to beat somebody down with the gold to footman, so you might as well take the coil. But it's not that great either. He's, he's probably having a think like as to what the other cards can do for him because the mortal coil is not amazing either, but it's, it's better than the other things on option. And that's something else Blackout wouldn't want to see, Alex Straza. Yeah, it's kind of good to have. It's something, you know, like, for, okay, Alex Strauss is not the last card in my deck, which which is pretty nice. But having it at this point, when he's severely lacking card draw, is a little bit rough. Um, it looks like... A, do you think we're going to see Nova this turn? Maybe maybe Cone of Cold? Uh, just to slow the game down a little bit, to let Blackout draw into some more cards. Yeah, he's going to have to do one or the other, I think. Oh, he's just got a Torch Ping, that's fair enough as well. Um, we did see this from Kallax, where the 5-4 guys are the biggest thing in the deck. Uh, for a long time and so it's worth just getting him out there as quickly as you can and try to put the pressure on that way and that has caused Blackout to have to use one of his removal spells he is playing a little bit more removal than most freeze though as he's using his torches yeah and this is fine it cycles a three mana fireball effectively into the deck so he knows that's in there now and he's going to come out later for some extra burst just because of uh, how small these cards look on the screen we do have emperor heal bot big game hunter dr boom iron beak another heal bot mortal coil two mortal coils because you got one from the peddler a dart bomb and a gang boss so definitely a lot of options i mean the worry here is like he can emperor but he doesn't really reduce, like, he only reduces, like, Dark Bomb, really. The, you know, that has, like, a large impact on his winning condition. But maybe yep. you Emperor now just because it's so much value. You just can't really ignore it. And I think that's probably the right play. Anything else feels a little bit slow in terms of, like, the Ink Gang Boss, maybe. Like, it doesn't really do much. Yeah, and I think that what happened there is he thought his instant play is, I'm going to play the Emperor. And then he did the thought process that you did, which is actually this emperor looks amazing because I can hardly see my cards. There's so many of them, but it doesn't really help. And so I think he spent the rest of his turn trying to work out, is there a play that isn't playing the emperor now? Can I delay the emperor? Then, then you default to, I'm saving nine mana. It can't be that bad. Yeah, and... exactly. And Dr. Boom's a pretty good follow-up, especially as you've just seen Fireball. So there's either needs to be another Fireball or Frost Nova Doomsayer to really deal with this uh 
this Doctor Boom. We do see Frost Nova Doomsayer, but it's whether he actually chooses to commit to it, because Cone of Cold is a reasonable option. It, it delays the Doctor Boom, and, uh, and you know, doesn't go all in on the Doomsayer, because you know this deck uh, of the Warlock can build up a board of pretty, uh, you know, some hard-hitting minions. And Blackout there choosing to try and get his Acolyte hit by Boombot, and they both missed and went face. Um, he does have a lot of stalled stuff he can do here. He can Frost Nova, Frost Nova, and in that time he should be able to draw some cards from this Acolyte, or at least one card. It's probably going to get um, Dark Bombed. And at that point he'll start filling his hand up and try and find a way to combo lethal. Yeah, and looking on Vortex's side, I was just going to say, he doesn't have a dragon to actually prop the Corruptor there, but he decides to just say, oh yeah, I could do with a dragon, I'm just going to tap into a, a, a Drake and it'll be fine. The Owl on the Acolyte, this is like a bit bit of a, you know, oh, maybe not the Owl on the Acolyte, maybe the Owl to push or kill off the 1-3. Uh, the it looks like he's going to use it to push for damage. This is slightly risky because normally you want to owl the Doomsayer to stop the, uh, you know, the, the clear the board turn. And now he's probably going to get maybe a little bit punished for this in terms of Frost Nova Doomsayer, which seems too good to pass up purely because you've just seen that owl used. Yeah, and you want to Frost Nova here anyway. You want to Frost Nova, Frost Nova Blizzard. You're buying time. You're just getting closer to that, that two-turn lethal. And... By if you're going to play the Frost Nova anyway, you might as well just stick the Doomsayer down while you're at it because you've just seen the Owl and there's not be a better chance to use it anyway. You don't think? And he can kill it, right? He's going to go Bran into um, Shooty Guy that does three twice into Mortal Coil. That's what he's thinking about here. Yeah, I think that's pretty. That's a pretty good clear up actually. The thing, the things Bran allows you to do. <laughs> yeah, Bran is absolutely um, when it does its thing. It's a really well balanced card because when it does its thing, it's ridiculous. But when it doesn't do its thing, you played a two four in constructed for three mana, um, which isn't where you want to be. Like Spider Tank's not good enough for most constructed decks, so Bran really isn't unless you get a lot of synergy from him. Yeah, and now the Blizzard's going to come down. As you said, buys more time, and now he's Blizzard even. The thing with the Doomsayer, yeah, you know, he saved the, he saved the Doomsayer kill on his board, but he built up a bigger board, and then suddenly, like, Vortex has to think about, ooh, Flame Strike feels scary now. You know, like, this actually just destroys his whole board, and a lot of his impactful cards, because although Healbots are really good in this matchup to try and sort of, you know, heal your way out of the, um, out of the burst from the Freeze Mage, like, they don't actually do anything to the Mage itself, so... Yeah, and as you said earlier, um, he didn't get to reduce any of the cards. He hasn't got many of the cards that do large chunks of damage with Maligos. And so, at this point, I mean, Blackout will be scared of what's coming, but he knows that next turn he can Alex Straza and he will have enough fireballs to finish it off in two turns. And he, he hasn't got 21 directly, right? So, it will take two turns, but he can just keep things under control with a second block. Which should be two turn lethal. That's a hell of a mortal coil as well. <laughs> yeah, just casually just killing off Antonidas with a mortal coil. This is kind of interesting though, because if um, we, we've seen both Frost Novas and the Blizzard, right? So no more freezes are going to come down, but like filling the board and not having room for a heal bot is, feels very risky. Vortex. Yeah, so Alex Star is going to take him down to 15, and then he's going to get to um, Bolt, Block, Fireball in some combination, which will put him down to 6. As you say, there's no chance to play the heal bot, and then if um, Blackout can just top deck one of several spells that do the extra damage, he does have that torch in there, he does have the second Fireball, he does have Ice Lancers, and now he's got the uh, Blood Mage as well. Yeah, so... Blood Mage is going to be... What is that? It's, it's not It's not going to be enough. He doesn't have the Ice Lances, but the, the, the sort of slight issue here with Alex Straza, or at least casting Alex Straza on Vortex, is that it gives Vortex the ability to kill off his own minions to it's then play the heal turn, bots. Right? Yeah, but he can play heal bots, right? Mm -hmm. Because he yeah, can... Yeah, he can't freeze the board. Yeah, so. exactly. He can run the minions in, so Alex Straza doesn't actually do too much. And, we, and now... See, this is the thing. Like, How does he... Does he have to like Hellfire to play Healbot? Like it feels so. Weird. Look how much of his board he kills, and if he Hellfires, he doesn't get the bonus from Bran. Is Soulfire worth Soulfire the one one then play Healbot? Um, he may have to do that, I think. Because, because otherwise, hellfire. yeah, Hellfire is just not not worth it. 
And so he's going to have to soul fire. That's amazing. So Blackout set that up nicely, but um, oh, Lotheb goes, but I don't think it's going to matter in this particular matchup, oddly enough. So he gets the heal, and it's going to be really difficult for Blackout to win this because the second heal bot's available as well. But Vortex could do with getting rid of one of those minions. Yeah, the thing is here, like, although... Ah, that's... I mean, Emperor's definitely going to help, but the problem is... what? What's the... So what's the play next turn? So Emperor comes down, and um, what does Blackout have to draw? I don't think it's doable, right? Because there's so much yeah, damage he... on the board that there's just nothing he can actually do about this. He has to stop the damage. He has to assume there's no heal bot, which there is anyway, even if he had all the other things under control. And he somehow has to stop the beatdown. There's just no way to come back from this, I don't think. 15. He's got no way of stalling any further yet. So he's going to be in dead in next turn. He's used up both blocks. So. Yep. This definitely feels pretty rough for Blackout. Um, there's no real way he can get out of this. So this almost certainly is game. Uh, I don't know what he's holding. Normally, Blackout's the type of person who will just smash concede. Um, unless there's something he's holding out for, but I don't really know what it could be. Uh, let's have a let's have a look to see what he draws. There's Pyro, Ice Lance. So, not going to be enough. And there's the concede. And Vortex takes the first game uh, with his Malilock versus the Freeze Mage. Yeah, Vortex likes this tournament. He won Assembly 2015. He also got to the top four in um, the summer version of the game, of the event so he likes it here and he's yet again in the semi-final he's 1-0 up yeah not um, doing too bad at all and vortex has now got a choice between his own mage or his paladin uh, against blackout's full lineup of his uh, mage his rogue or his druid so vortex pro played tempo mage correct yeah he's playing tempo mage so he probably wants to throw that tempo mage into the druid for, for you know what feels like a, a much more comfortable matchup but we'll see because that's kind of it's kind of a rough choice I, I think you maybe do pick tempo mage um because there's a one you know one in three chance and if blackout just decides to lock in his mate his own mage again which i imagine he will because it lines up very good versus the mage and the paladin oh he's gone for the rogue and he's got rogue versus paladin yeah. this is really interesting i didn't really see this coming up either way yeah a million level of mind games there from both players and um, Vortex has got to find a way to get this Paladin to get a win, though. This is what we said about Blackout all tournament. With this, with this lineup, it's pretty difficult to take a win with Paladin against. So obviously, if you've got a series of 40-60s, you are likely to win one in the end because 40 60s is not that bad. But it is possible that Blackout would just keep going through Paladins here. And he's got the fan in his opening hand. He's got prep sprint. He's got healing. He's got deadly poison. This is a pretty good starting hand. Uh, Vortex picking up all his mid-game stuff. And so, yeah, um, um, Blackout is just going to try and set up ways to get the most out of this fan. He needs to get control of the board by turn six, which means that turn five is going to be you know, um, important for Vortex to set up this Pirate Shredder, to set up this um, Sludge Belcher and see where it goes from there. And as we see, he gets the muster, which is just no use. It's not no use, but it's very little use at all against the fan. And Blackout's going to have a big Violet Teacher turn in a second, which will enable his board to look pretty terrifying. And he, Blackout, obviously, really good with Rogue. We discussed yesterday that Blackout was playing Rogue back in the Miracle days, and even like before, just he's always liked Rogue as a thing. Every major tournament comes along. Even if he doesn't play it, he'll tell everyone beforehand, hey, I, I think Rogue's really good at the moment. He, he's just constantly saying that Rogue is well-placed. And... Here we go. He's just setting up a huge turn with that sap. With the, he managed to keep the coin, and suddenly just turns the board right around. And going into that turn six, it looks like he's going to have enough stuff going on that he should be able to play around Doctor Six. Okay, um, whether he can then withstand a Doctor Boom after that as well remains to be seen. Yeah, this is looking um, this is looking pretty grim. To be honest, for the uh, for the Paladin, I think I just had to step away from it. Though there goes that guys. I had a few technical issues on my end, so sorry about that. I missed some of the game. Um, so yeah, basically Blackout got a really good opening hand, and Vortex drew all his mid game stuff, which is now going to start kicking in. But Blackout's been pretty much in control. He's managed to hold on to his fan, 
um, for emergency use as well. So uh, he did use his prep. He may have prep spin. He's managed to use that to use the violet to get the board with the violet teacher basically. Yeah, this is going to be maybe a bit of a struggle now for Blackout as Mysterious Challenger followed by Doctor Boom and even the Belcher and the Shredder later on. Uh, it's going to be kind of kind of rough to deal with, and that is a full tree from Vortex. So we do have somewhere the Repentance. There it is. So uh, the one one to prop the secrets, kind of nice to just get the get down out of the way. But is there um, what are we looking at here? Potentially uh, Drake. It, I'm just working out a nice way to actually clear this guy without taking too much damage. But it's going to happen, and then the boom follow up is just going to be even worse. Yeah, the boom follow up always looked like it could be a problem for Blackout here. We're going to see him, see what he can draw. And I mean, if he just trying to draw a way to deal with this massive challenger, but I mean, he just has to eviscerate and face tank it. There's no other way. Yeah, he he won't want to do that because it starts removing like it removes the power of his blade flow and stuff if he does that as well. So he may be deciding to play the tomb pillager. Um, feeling that that's more of a play to win, which rather than just hanging in there running himself out of cards. Uh, as we see, he's going to eat a large chunk of damage right now, and then he's going to have to face a boom as well, which is not pleasant in the slightest. Yeah, and even drawing it for Vortex, I mean, boom feels like the, the natural play to just slam down on top of the 10-8, of course. But having the Noble Sacrifice actually maybe changes a few things. Like, maybe you can play the, like he's doing now, the, like the Muster... Um, mm -hmm. to clear up the 5-1 and he could have dropped down the Noble Sacrifice to make the uh, potential attacking with the weapon a bit awkward yeah and you know, he can afford to eat the 5 damage and he's put Blackout in a spot of he desperately needs to just draw something that allows him to blade flow this lot away but that's not happening by the look of it yeah this flow is um, going to come down prep a vest to clear up uh, or at least clear the 10-4 there's still two three on the board, so that's still uh, you know representing some damage. And now Boom's going to get dropped, and there's just the, the, the running low on answers now for Boom. Once you've seen a flurry, um, he's you know put a lot of uh, the damage into dealing with the the, the outcome of uh, mysterious challenger as well. So uh, there's a it's looking a little bit rough now for Blackout. Yeah, and he's used both preps, so he can't sprint into some sort of disgusting prep escape. Um, he's just looking like. It's going to be really difficult for him to top deck anything that gets him out of this one. Um, does Sprint Sap possibly do anything? Him. Well, I suppose Sap, he doesn't Sap. instantly die from Sprint Sap, but uh, you know the the issue there is your opponent then just plays Dr. Boom. Yeah. I'm just wondering how much damage is left in Blackout's deck and whether you know there's a chance that he can actually just burst him down. He does get See? this. He's going to get the backstab of this off with the Drake down, so that does clear that up. And that's about as good as he could have hoped for from there. It does give him an outside squeak, maybe? I mean, these the, the thing here is as well, like if these two Boombots hit face, like the game's pretty much over, right? Uh, yeah. he's, he's just going to keep playing minions to try and get juggles on there, or at least one juggle on the Azure Drake. Yeah, one's perfect for him here. He's actually being greedy and protecting the boombox, which is fair enough as well. He's just playing... Uh, this is the opposite. He's just playing super safe. Because, um, like, what does the rogue do with no minions, this board? An AoE now mm -hmm. will kill him. More than likely. More than likely. Yeah, and... Sprint. I don't know what Blackout's he's... trying to sprint into here. Maybe I think just you just to, make just sure draw. that you haven't forgotten something. Or maybe you can sprint into... Um, blade flowy, play low theb. The boombots both hit the low theb, or something like that. But you just, you just, you just see the cards and make sure that nothing clicks when they get appeared. And it's good to see Blackout doing that because he, you know, self confesses sometimes plays a bit too quick or concedes too hastily. So it's good that he's building that into his game to just, just check before you concede. Yeah. So now Vortex has his mage left, I believe, versus Blackout's full lineup. And um, the, the funny thing about Conquest is that this isn't like just like the end for blackout really because he knows now exactly what he's up against and you know he, he already has it in his mind to like how he can beat these guys and with what decks he's already starting with his druid so blackout's doing the time saving mechanic here where you you play your uh, potentially worst matchup although this is freeze actually oh okay i thought vortex had tempo i thought he had tempo as well like 
Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I, th I must have just been wrong. Uh, I thought Blackout was playing the worst matchup first, just to save time, because if he loses this set, he's actually out of the tournament. So, um, but it looks like he's actually playing his best matchup, which is the Druid versus the uh, the Freeze Maze, just to try and get a point on the board there. Yeah, I, I'm sorry if that's my misleading. I, I had that note as tempo made from yesterday, so obviously it wasn't. And Blackout now going to just get this Druid on the go and. As you say, it's his best match at first. Try and just put the pressure on as opposed to the time saver, which we could all know that Blackout would definitely be capable of. Right? It's one of the things he would like to do is just, just get it out of the way. And if you win, your opponent's under pressure the other way. That's sometimes the theory. Um, if you get the, the, the hard one out of the way first. Yeah, and then starting with a, a shredder so early into a shade definitely is the you know a good opening. I think it, uh, in the next... Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Does it... You can't really attack with the shade because of Frostball, right? Or do you attack just to get the value? It's kind um, of a tough one. It's only an extra two points of damage. I guess you keep it stealth because that's one of your victory mechanisms. But if you've got no way of dealing with the Doomsayer anyway... Exactly. I In the next two turns, you definitely want that uh, that Keeper of the Grove to deal with the Doomsayer. Um, and if you've not got it, you're definitely feeling a little bit worried. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we actually saw an attack maybe next turn from Blackout. It's, it's definitely going to be a bit rough because suddenly you, you start to get wary about, you know, even the blizzard on, and then a flame strike. You know, you, you never know with the area, maybe even a cone of cold hitting it as well. There is a chance that the vortex could reduce that, um, the shade down. So does he yeah, just I... attack with both now? It's I mean, really he would have made the decision last yeah. turn not to attack, I suspect, so that he won't again. But like you say, six is a lot. Um, but I think you just protect it because it's so hard for them to get rid of. If you can get rid of their um, Doomsayer, which you might be able to, unfortunately for him he's one short, um, then you can keep it stealthed and get back into the game with the lady, because they just can't race it with the blizzards and the flame strikes. Yeah. But, but now, unfortunately for Blackout, he's not going to be able to clear this up. Yeah, it would have been uh, crazy if the Shredder was on the other side, actually, because then he could force of nature and get the buff from the totem. Which would then clear the uh, clear the doomsayer off, but he obviously wouldn't have had the same amount of damage because the shade and the druid of the claw wouldn't have been buffed. Yeah, and um, he does have decent hand to come back though from the removal. At least he's going to be able to draw cards over and over. He's got boom. He's got half of the combo. Um, Vortex is down to eighteen. Vortex is starting to accumulate the damage in his hand now. Um, long way off from being able to do much yet, but it'll be interesting to see if Blackout, yeah, just putting maximum damage down, saving the card draw until you know as late as possible. Yeah, I mean, um, Vortex doesn't have anything too amazing. I mean, if an Emperor came down now, it would feel pretty good with the uh, the combination of like the Fireball, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, then uh, and the. Archmage Antonidas in hand, but at the moment, we might even just have to oh, okay, he's going to go with a fireball to clear off the Dr. Boom, Re representing too much damage on the board, and especially when the Druid is on so many cards still, after playing Dr. Boom you just think, oh, well, you know, like I could be in a lot of, uh, uh, you know a lot of pressure here, and there's Alex Straza took from the first draw of the Acolyte is that going to overdraw yeah. Vortex actually? Does it he might, but coin? he's got the Alex and the Antonidas in hand anyway, so yeah, even though true. it's bad, it's not quite as bad as it would be had he not got those cards in hand. Yeah. So Blackout's yeah. going with the, the safe route of just playing the uh, Ancient of Law to draw some more cards. Not really, like, I mean, the Dance Aspirant isn't fantastic, but the big game hunter just uh, straight up is your answer to Alex Straza, which is nice to yeah. just have by now. And he was told last turn that you know, I can't deal with a lot of things right now, so put your big things on the board. By when the fireball hits the boom, it's like you don't you know they don't want to do that, so you know they're a little bit light on on removal in their hand. And so it is the the green light to actually try and spam the board with big stuff. Yeah, and now Blackout's flying on the fact that maybe next turn he's gonna go into the uh, Ancient of Law heel to push himself back up a little bit. Because the second, I mean, this is start, going to start getting a little bit scary. So, like, Antonidas can come down this turn along with, what, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. Uh, yeah, I suppose it's just Ice Lance, Ice Lance, right? Is that the play? Seems good. Um, puts him to 14 with two Fireballs in hand and Antonidas on the board. And now you've just drawn to Thalnos, so you can Thalnos Fireball, Fireball. 
And is that what he's going to do? Ooh, I was hoping to have a loot hoarder for a second, and I was like, I'm pretty sure you don't play Antonidas and play zero spells. I'm not yeah. the uh, the best freeze mage player in the world, but I'm pretty sure you don't just play Antonidas loot hoarder pass. And I was pretty scared that I totally misunderstood everything there <laughs> just for a second. And getting the maximum from the bomb, but he needed that to hit Antonidas, because now look at this trade, it just makes no sense. He's going to have to. Well, he can run the 4 2 in and then keep at the Grove, but he does have yeah. to heal, doesn't he? There's, do you want a card from his Wrath, or do you want to do 3 damage with it and save your 5 I five? think you want 3 damage. You uh, you have two five fives on the board, um, so you know that's presenting uh, enough power. Oh, he trades the 5 5 in, okay. Yeah, it's hard to know whether to keep the beats coming or whether to mm. actually just keep the two things that are hard to kill on the board. So, Ooh. But he knows about the fireballs, so I guess he decided, you know. The thing could be dealt with anyway. So is this the turn for... Does heal do anything? Heal demands one more damage to prop the block, right? If he mm -hmm. plays... I'm just thinking, like, does he... Uh... He could just use his face, right? He'd be 5, five 9, 10 with his face. So the heal didn't really do anything in that in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just working out how is, is it worth overdoing something like fireball ping here. So now he's, he's going to fireball ping and then have Thanos to go Thanos uh, fireball frostbolt ping mm -hmm. next turn, which should easily be enough to win this game. Yeah. Uh, seven. Is it enough? Numbers. Seven, four, and one is twelve indeed. So if blackout hero powers here, it would be one off. I mean, you probably will hero power, right? Yeah, no, nothing. Hero power, getting the extra health is more valuable than playing a Dynasty's Aspirant at this point. It's, it's also important to put the opponent to one because if he does clear your board, you want to be able to kill him with a hero power with yeah. no block down. So that extra point is ah. actually really relevant. Oh, well, uh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, or you can Cast do... the math, not required. That. Yeah. Yeah, point it the other way, Vortex, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, wow. Wow, there we go. I mean, that was pretty... Uh, a little bit unexpected to, to see a 3-0, especially in Conquest format. Um, especially in Conquest, especially with um, Blackout bringing the anti-Paladin lineup and Vortex having the Paladin. But he won that game against the Rogue, and that was the turning point for me. Yeah, that was pretty pretty huge, actually, getting that win there. And it was just, uh, let's be honest, he did secret Paladin things, right? He had he had uh, the Challenger uh, into Boom, and it was just too much for Blackout to actually deal with. Didn't get uh, much sort of clean... Uh, board wipes there that cost him just too a little bit too much. So Vortex is going through. Um, I don't know if I have the link to the updated bracket. Yeah, he's in the final now for the second year running in the um, Assembly Winter, and he will be playing the winner of Spo or Synthetic. Uh, we saw Synthetic earlier playing um, Zoo, Paladin, Tempo Mage, and his Druid was banned. So he's got a pretty aggressive lineup, and we haven't seen anything of Spo yet in this tournament on on this stream at least. Yeah. And obviously he's one of the, the bigger names in the tournament. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there as well. Yeah, that's going to be our next match coming up. But for now, we're just going to go to a quick break while they get the guys ready for the next one. So thanks a lot for watching.